Today we're changing the lower unit oil on our 1985 Evinrude V90 and uh, for those of you who don't know how to do it I'm gonna walk you through my process. This is my first time ever doing this myself. So first thing I've done a little bit of research and I found out that there's a drain plug down here and then there's another drain plug up here. The way this is supposed to work is that you're supposed to drain the oil out of the bottom drain plug using the top one to allow air to flow through and then whenever you fill you're actually supposed to fill it from the bottom drain plug until oil comes out the top drain plug. So what we did is we tilted our boat trailer appropriately so that way I could fit my drain pan underneath of here. I'm just using my car automotive drain pan and then I purchased uh, this Got this from Walmart. Uh, it's a lower unit marine pump and it has adapters for different kinds of motors. And then I bought the appropriate marine lower unit gear lube. So according to everything that I've read, that's the right run for this motor. And that's the right size container to fill this motor and that that should work. So we're gonna give it a try. So the first thing we have to do is we're gonna pop these two screws out and uh, take a look at it. I got very lucky and when I went to check these, they came out quite easily. So I just have to pop them free. One of the things I did read on the internet too was that you're supposed to, uh, ooh, very milky. That means there's water getting in there. Is that you're supposed to change these washers or gaskets in here too. So when it's milky, it means you have water getting into your lower unit. So we definitely have water getting into our lower unit. So it's good that we're draining this out and changing it. Now we're going to take out the top bolt. As you can see, it's draining slowly. We take out this top one. I imagine it will increase our draining speed. Let's take a look. As we get that loosened. We'll look down here, see if more starts coming out. Also, they're slightly different. The top one is just flat, and the bottom one had a uh, magnetic tip on it, which has just a little bit of metallic debris. The gray on here is metallic debris, and that's normal. If it had big chunks of it, that would be bad. But we definitely have water getting into our lower unit, so. We'll continue to let that drain. One of the things I heard was that you're supposed to let this drain for an hour before you uh, fill it back up again. So you wanna make sure that your motor is sitting very vertical to allow that to happen properly. So we're just gonna let this drain for a while. So it's about an hour later, and as you can see, the oil has kind of slowed to a very, very slow trickle. So while it's finishing draining, the milky oil is draining, uh, I did look up a few things on the internet and uh, checked a few things. So uh, I don't know if I showed my prop earlier, but this is a different prop because I pulled my prop off because uh, I wanted to see if the prop seals were bad. Uh, there was a little bit of milky oil located underneath of here. So there is a possibility that my prop seals are bad, but also that could also just be some of the grease from the, the splines on here. So I pulled off my old prop, checked it out, didn't see any fishing line. Uh, trapped up in there, uh, but the seals possibly could need to be replaced. Another possible culprit, they say, are the uh, gaskets that are used here, and I've cleaned these up a little bit. These are the gaskets that were on there, and as you can see, they look like they're pretty good. However, they're a blue plastic, and I'm going to look into that to see if they should actually be some other material, because I'm wondering if they're too rigid of a gasket and that's why they're not sealing properly. So they said that the first culprit could be that one of these wasn't sealing. And I know both of these screws were not super tight, so that is a possibility. Uh, and then the next culprit usually is the the uh, prop prop shaft seals, which those are quite a, their project to change. So that would be for another video. So what we're gonna do today though, is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start uh, swapping out our oil here real soon. Uh, so what I did was I took apart my I took the foil out, out of the, the top of this bottle here, it was underneath of the cap here, and I put together my uh, hyper tough lower unit fill marine pump, which is a weird name, um, and I attached, you attach the straw 
uh, to this by just pressing it in. You leave the curvy end at the bottom because that, whenever you screw this into the top of your bottle, that helps to suck the fluid off the bottom of it. And that's why you want to have the curvy end on the bottom. And then because this is an Evinrude, this yellow end is going to screw in our lower unit here. And we'll put this in the top of the bottle. And then we're supposed to just be able to go pump, 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 pump until we see oil coming out up here. So that's what we're going to do. And then once oil's coming out up here, you're supposed to put this cap in here, tighten it up, and then quickly, when you're ready, you take off the fitting from where you're pumping it full, and then you put the plug in the bottom. So that way you only lose just a little bit of oil as you go to swip, switch that around. Now, the other thing I was told to do because of the fact that my oil is milky is basically you put this all back together again, you run it for a little while, drain the oil again, uh, you know, run it in, in, the, in the water uh, for a while, drain the oil again, and then see if it's uh, still got the problem, and then you know that you have to change some other seals and uh, keep working on it. So uh, I may do some more research this winter because I'm not going to be running it again until the summer. Because my oil was so milky uh, to be able to do this properly, I actually pumped a little bit of oil in from the top and uh, a little bit of fresh oil in from the top, and I'm letting that run through right now to uh, help get out the rest of the milky oil. Uh, I just did a little bit of it just to be able to uh, flush that milkiness out of the system as much as I could. I also tried using some compressed air uh, and uh, pushing it through that way, but that didn't really seem to, to, to do all that much, so. So here's a couple interesting things I learned. This has a rigid tube that goes into the bottle. If you notice this particular brand I bought, has a big cutaway in here. So the tube actually is going in at an angle, so I cannot get this threaded onto the top of the bottle. Compare that to a different bottle of, uh, this is hydraulic jack oil, and you'll see that there is enough space for a tube to go straight down in that bottle. Also, I learned that you need to thread this fitting in first because otherwise your hose gets all kinked up and twisted. So I've got this threaded all the way in and tight, and then you just you put this in and you start pumping and as you can see there's fluid going through the tube and you're supposed to just keep pumping until you see something coming out up top here so it should essentially use about the whole bottle I believe so we have to go for a couple seconds here and I'm uh, still just pumping away slowly just pumping releasing should start to see something coming out up top if I'm doing it right. The reason you pump it through from the bottom instead of filling it up from the top is apparently to avoid any air pockets or air bubbles. I don't know what the mechanisms are inside of the lower unit and how it's designed, what the passageways are like, but Everything I've heard is that's why you fill it from the bottom instead of from the top. So that way you make sure you're uh, getting all of the uh, air out of the way. And we're still not seeing anything even close to coming out of top here. Okay, a few hundred pumps later and now you see oil is starting to come out of the top hole. So we'll just do a couple more pumps here. See how there's more oil coming out the top hole. So that's good. We've got it all the way filled up. So now what you do is you put the plug back in the top. Make sure you get that completely tight. And then we'll remove the bottle assembly from the bottom and put the plug in the bottom, but I'm going to use both hands for that. So as I was all done, I uh, picked up the, this valve out of here and put the other end into the bottle. So that way I'm pumping air through this, this line. Obviously you want to keep this saved somewhere separately. This, uh, this gear oil, it's stinky stuff. 
uh, you don't want to be uh, using it for any other projects other than this particular thing so wherever you keep all of your boat things you'll want to keep that so now we you can see we have the drain plug in the top and then I have the drain plug back in the bottom I'm gonna wipe them off really good make sure they're not leaking or seeping any oil but mostly this is just for winter so if I have it all sealed off as tight as I can get it and I take it out a few times in the spring and we see milkiness back in the oil we know that there's something else we need to do but now we know there is no water in our lower unit while I'm winterizing the boat thanks for watching